you wanted the best, you've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest podcast in the world. In the world. The Chris Voss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Hi, folks. Chris Voss here from the Chris Voss Show.com. The Chris Voss Show.com. Hey, we're coming here with another great podcast. We certainly appreciate you guys tuning in. As always, be sure to refer the show to your friends, neighbors, relatives. Get them listening. Get them subscribed. Get in the big family that loves you, but doesn't judge you. The best kind of family there is the Chris Voss Show. Uh, go to youtube.com for just Chris Voss. Hit the bell notification button. Go to goodreads.com for it says Chris Foss. See everything we're reading and reviewing over there. Go to all our groups on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, all those crazy places those kids are on the interwebs. Also go to our uh, big LinkedIn group, 132,000 people over there. And also uh, the LinkedIn newsletter. That thing is killing it over there. It's just an amazing newsletter and this is growing so fast. Uh, that LinkedIn, that's really becoming something. I should be getting paid for that advertisement. LinkedIn, call me. Anyway, guys, we have another amazing person on the show. Uh, uh, she, I think you're going to be just blown away by her resume and everything that she's done. Uh, we have on the show with us today, Shawnee Harley. She is a mental fitness coach, <clears throat> and she is a two-time Olympian as a former assistant coach for Canada Basketball and is one of the most highly certified coaches in Canada. We love Canada. She has 27 years of elite coaching and leadership experience, including the Olympic Games, World Championships, uh, FIBA, FIBA Americas, and World University Games. Welcome to the show, Shawnee. How are you? Um, awesome. And uh, I think your intro said something about this, all the smart people that you have on this show. I'm like, wow, thank you for that. They haven't even met me yet, and you called me smart. There you go. Well, we have to have smart people on the show because I'm the... I'm the dumb one, so uh, you guys make me all look, well, half smart. I don't know. My audience knows after 12 years ago uh, <laughs> that I'm not the smartest one. But that's the beautiful part about having people like you on the show. Give me your plugs so people can find you on the interwebs and uh, get to know you more about your dot-coms and stuff. Best place to find me is my website, shawneeharley.com. I'm on social media, and people look for me. When they're trying to train their brain, because I work with athletes, I help them figure out what's going on in their head and their heart, Mm -hmm. cut through the noise, because there's so much noise going on up there, (laughs) and unleash their inner tiger, And because it takes a village, parents and coaches are included in my coaching. There you go. Uh, my psychiatrist says I have a village, but it's like eight personalities. So there's that. Um, that's a joke. Uh, so, uh, you've done the, you've been doing this for a long time, 27 years of elite coaching. That's awesome. I have been doing it for a long time. Um, it's funny how we get on these paths and journeys that, uh, we didn't think that was the original (laughs) destination when we started moving along. I started out as an athlete, then I was an elite coach for years and years and years, and then now I'm on the place I think that I was truly meant to be. It's as a mental toughness coach, helping athletes, parents, and coaches. Yeah. You know, what's always interesting is, is, you know, people think that, you know, being in the Olympics or being in a high championship sport or just being successful in life uh, takes, you know, a lot of mental or physical agility, physical talent, you know, working out all the time and doing all of that stuff. But a lot of athletes, in spite of all that, you know, if they're, if their head isn't in the game, their mental fitness, as you say, um, they don't perform well. And so uh, that's, that's, I don't know, maybe half the battle. Is that true? Or more? Well, I think it was um, – I, 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 Yogi Berra had a great coach, a great coach one time about, um, and he, he said, he said something like 90% of the game is, is mental. Mm-hmm. And so is the other 10%. That isn't a perfect <laughs> quote, but he way back in the day that was in baseball, um, he picked up on this 
And what I'm seeing, and I'm sure what parents and coaches and athletes that might be listening to this, we know that talent levels out. I mean, the higher you go, everybody is good. So talent levels out, physical ability levels out. Then what? Mm -hmm. Where's now where's the advantage? If everyone's quick, strong, fast, and skilled, where's the advantage? I think hands down, the advantage becomes in the mental part of the game. Most definitely. And I think I was I heard that uh Yogi Berra thing. I think that was what I was trying to pull out of my head. He uh uh, so what, who, who, what clients do you normally work with? Who are the people that you're usually handling? And, and if people are out there listening, how do they know that they're in your realm as a potential client for you? I haven't met anyone that isn't put mm-hmm. it that way. My, the youngest client I've worked with is 10 mm-hmm. all the way up to uh 40, 46 year old, um, adult athletes who are still highly competitive in their sport. So I've worked with Olympians all the way down to uh, the kids that are just starting out in youth sport because what we're talking about is the mental part of the game matters from day one. It's not like, oh, now I'm an Olympian. I guess I can work on my mental games. <laughs> like, oh, no, you missed the boat. <laughs> that should have been happening years ago. This this mental toughness, I help people build a mental toughness toolkit. Mm-hmm. I don't there's no age limit on mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. The uh so it's it's good to start early. I remember Michael Phelps, uh, you know, yes. who who kind of has a I mean he, he has a freak of nature body sort of that's built for swimming mm-hmm. and uh you know just uh seemingly uh born talent to it. But even then he went through a period where he needed to go get his head reassigned and re, and re re put back into the game, if you will. Um, and so, you know, you, you see that somebody even at that level, um, you know, has to get their mentality right for it. And rightly so. If, if you, if you look at, I, I mean, I don't know if any, if sport has ever been more difficult than it is in this day and age with mm-hmm. social media, athletes, cannot hide. I don't care if you're 10. I don't care if you're Michael Phelps. Someone's videoing you. Mm -hmm. Someone's talking about you. Someone is taking pictures of you. Mm -hmm. And it's going on social media. It's going on Facebook pages. It's going on websites. It's incredibly difficult trying to be an athlete in this day and age because you are completely exposed. Mm -hmm. Everything you do is judged either good or bad, everything you do, someone has an opinion. So no wonder we need help with, go- with what's going on in our head. We get, we're in these emotional storms all of the time because of the pressure. Yeah. I imagine, I imagine, you know, they, they, I, I I'm, I'm can't think of the reference that I'm thinking of, but uh, I think there's a thing that goes around about Albert Einstein uh, and I'm not sure if the story is true, but it's a meme that goes around it. And it tells a story about how he, he counted something up to 10 for his, for his, uh, class. And he, he on purpose made a mistake on one of the 10 items or something. And they said, Oh, you know, you screwed that up, uh, teacher. And he's like, no, what I was teaching you was that you can get, you can be right 90% of the time, but people only remember the times you're wrong 10% of the time. And I imagine that happens with athletes from what you're saying. Where, you know, if they have a bad day or if they're off, I'm, I can think of some athletes that were in the Olympics that had a bad day or start off wrong and they came out swell. But, you know, sometimes everybody, you know, focuses on that and harps on it and comments on it. And that, I'm sure that can get in your head. Without a doubt. I I have a parent that um, messaged me the other day saying, uh, my daughter's volleyball, they're in a club volleyball team, we finished second. So they got the silver medal in this big tournament. And at the end of the uh, match, when they got second, the coach made all the players run suicides right there in the venue at the end of the game wow. because they had gotten second. Wow. So if that's happening, if if, if these teenagers are feeling that pressure, you can imagine 
what's happening with the Olympians. I think a March Madness because that's, you know, that's just recently we're, we're coming up tonight with a pretty big game in March Madness. Can you imagine the pressure of those two teams? Because someone's going to get what they want and someone's going to get what they don't want. Yeah. And then everyone is going to have an opinion about both. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's the Super Bowl, uh, I, I think there was some down in South America. It might have been Brazil. There was a soccer match that, uh, uh, for, you know, the World Cup or something. And, and the, uh, one of the players screwed it up. I think it was the goalie and he ended up killing himself. Yes. Uh, just out of shame. And, you know, the whole nation was hitting on him. And, and, uh, so it's very dark. So, uh, on your website, you talk about, uh, welcome to the mind gym. Uh, tell us about what that is and how that works. It's just like your local fitness center. Mm-hmm. You go and you go and work out. And you you get stronger, quicker, faster. Mm-hmm. I think we need the exact same thing for our brain. Mm-hmm. We need to have a gym where we can go and get like our brain is just like a muscle. It can get stronger. Mm-hmm. It can learn resilience. It can learn grit. It can learn mental toughness skills. And I use skills intentionally. Mm -hmm. That means we're not necessarily born with them. Skills Mm -hmm. are something that with practice, they improve. And the mind gym is where I train athletes, parents, and coaches to help them get ready for the storm. Mm -hmm. Because the storm's coming. I call it the shit storm. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the shit storm's coming and you're going to be covered in poop. Mm-hmm. So it's coming and there's nothing you can do about whether it comes or not. And if you haven't had it yet, get ready. Mm-hmm. How do we prepare for that storm? How do we manage that storm? I think we need to train for it. Mm-hmm. Now, it looks like you talk about a lot about emotional intelligence. Is that correct? And, and you know, bringing emotion in, in, into the mental part of, of the game? Oh, you bring in one of my favorite F words. <laughs> Feelings. Feelings, eh? Yes. Hey, you said A. Yeah, Are you I, from Canada? No, I do that. I, I, <laughs> I, I, that you'll probably hear me pulling a boot. I have a lot of Canadian <laughs> friends, so I always teach you guys. Love it. Here's, here's what I think about the storm. Mm-hmm. I think the storm is an emotional storm. When things aren't going well, when we're under pressure, three minutes left in the game and we're down six, whatever it happens to be, think about all of the feelings that come with that. We have nerves. We have fear. Some people say it's anxiety. We feel pressure. How in the world are we supposed to manage any of that if we don't have, if we have zero emotional intelligence? And I'll tell you something that really pisses me off about sport. I think sport teaches us to be emotionally unintelligent. It says, oh, yes, it says because don't have a feeling. Oh, Mm. actually, that's not true. Go ahead and have happy ones, Mm. but do everything you can to avoid crappy ones. (laughs) If you feel nervous, oh, don't feel that. Just get out there and be confident. You got this. All the (laughs) fluffy BS that we tell athletes and Mm. the athletes that I've worked worked with hundreds of athletes, I ask them, when you're in the middle of the storm, And you're being overwhelmed with all of this pressure. And someone says, just get out there and be confident. You got this. Does Mm -hmm. it help? And they all say, no. (laughs) It's like, yeah, I know. It's It's a storm. And somebody says, just get out there and be confident. Get out there and be confident. Brutal. You know, I see that a lot on social media too. People are, there's a lot of cheerleading or people go, you got this. And you're like, what is this? And what do I got again? Well, you know what athletes say to me? Someone Hmm. says to me, they'll go like, hey, coach, you know, somebody yells at me, come on, you got this. And they're like, and in my heart and in my mind, I'm like, hell no, I I don't got this. (laughs) I don't got this. Like, it's like they're telling me to swim, but nobody gave me swimming lessons. Or a paddle. 
Well, that's or a paddle, <laughs> or a life jacket. Yeah, or those flipper things. I think that's what I was going for—the flipper things. Flippers and the goggles. Flippers. Yeah, and goggles too. That's always good. Um, you get that chlorine in your eye. So you work with a lot of um, uh, different people. Let me pull your website here so that I have it. Uh, you have an online course. Uh, you mm-hmm. do group coaching, uh, sport family coaching, and personal coaching. In the sport family coaching, do you help coach the whole family and not just whatever the athlete is so they can get support? I sure do. Mm-hmm. It's, I think that the parents have one of the biggest influences on the DTE. That's a fancy way of saying the daily training environment. Mm-hmm. Parents are hugely influential. And most of the athletes that I work with, one of the biggest places that they feel pressure is from their parents. Mm. So when a, when a family come, when somebody says, hey, I want to sign my athlete up, mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, there's my online course. Off you go. But if they want to do any training with me, they can't sign just their athlete up. They have to sign at least one parent up because we all need to swim. Do you think parents aren't in the same freaking emotional storm as their kids? Have you ever watched parents in the stands? <laughs> yeah. Do you see any of them calmly sitting there just cheering appropriately, just relaxed? Yeah. That's not what I see. So I get to help parents also. They might be more emotionally uh, things I've seen some, I've seen some parents get a little out of hand, you know, like uh, go yell at the empire or something. <laughs> You're just like, hey, hey, that guy should calm down. But uh, you know, I mean, there you go. I, it's uh, it's funny. But um, so what 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 are some other things? Uh, you sent me several articles. One was kind of interesting. One out of three girls drops out of sports by her late teens, um, and uh, trying to trying to keep people in sports more. Uh, I know that sports, you know, when I grew up, you had to take, uh, you had to take, what would they call it? PE, PE sports, uh, throughout school. And you had to take it every year too, you know, and, and you always had the coach that made you, uh, run the laps until you bled out of your liver or something. Um, but, uh, you know, there's been a lot of talk in recent years where schools have been cutting back on PE and, and sports and, and different things to where kids aren't getting as much, uh, you know, getting as much exercise. What intrigues me about that stat, Mm -hmm. one in three dropping out, and just this conversation in general, is why. Mm -hmm. Like, like what's going on? Why are we losing more youth than ever? Why are they quitting? Mm -hmm. I mean, 70% are quitting by the age of 13. Girls drop out at six times the rate of boys, Mm -hmm. what has changed? Mm -hmm. And it depends on who you talk to. Mm -hmm. Because when I talk to coaches, here's what coaches tell me. Oh, kids are so soft. They're just so soft these days. We can't, we can't even coach them anymore. (laughs) That's what I hear a lot. Uh But then I also get to talk to athletes. Mm -hmm. Uh, You remember I gave you that example of that uh, parent that said her daughter's team that finished second at the end of the tournament right there in the tournament facility in front of all the people had to run suicides for finishing second. So I get to hear a lot coming from the athletes and what they tell me is why would I want to stay doing something where I get guilted, blamed and shamed on a daily basis. And I'm like, wow, that's interesting to me. What has happened? Remember, we talked earlier. Everything has changed with social media. There's nowhere to hide. What I see happening is I think parents and coaches feel as exposed mm-hmm. as the athletes. And when their team isn't winning, mm-hmm. when parents have kids that are sitting on the bench, mm-hmm. Or making mistakes in big moments. Mm-hmm. Do you see what happened? They, I think they feel, wow, this is a reflection of me. Yeah. And we don't respond to that very well. We, our ego gets in there. And then the blame always goes 
on to the athletes. Oh. I that's why I bring parents into the training and coaches into the training. I think we right a rising tide lifts all boats. Mm-hmm. I think we all need to raise our mental game because the storm, I keep calling it the storm. Coaches feel it, parents feel it, and athletes feel it. And what I see happening is when the storm is raging, do you know who's really raging? Who? The coach and the parents. Mm-hmm. And the athletes are drowning and struggling to swim. Yeah. And they're finally like, "Who? this isn't what I signed up for. <laughs> I'm out of here. This is this is not this isn't fun. I don't enjoy it. I don't like my coach. I feel blamed, shamed, and guilted. I'm yeah. not in the cool kids club because our team has cliques. And people are like, you know what? I'm out. And I think that is terrible. Yeah. Sport look, I sport should be, I think should fill us up. Yeah. I see it draining us. Definitely. And we're becoming more sedentary because of it, because, you know, now we just get fatter, especially here in America, we get fatter by the minute and, and, uh, we don't exercise enough. Um, and the coach does make a lot of the difference too. I mean, I, when I went to high school and of course I went before the participation generation, um, you know, I had the full metal jacket, uh, (laughs) drill sergeant coach who uh, didn't make it fun. And you're just like, I think he's really a masochist trying to torture me. I think that's what he's really about. Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what happened to him as a child, but he has a lot of anger management issues. Um, and maybe he melt well. I don't know. But I, I went to school in the 80s, and, you know, there were people still with paddles back then that would hit students. And and so, uh, you know, it was a kind of interesting age, but it didn't make PE fun. I didn't, I didn't like PE. In fact, PE was like the worst. And I, I'm still, I still have no idea why, the, what the, why we all had to wear jock straps, but I don't know, whatever. Uh, that was like library. If you were caught without your jock strap, it was, it was, you were, you were, I don't know, I, I suspended or something. It was, it was like, it was like somebody's really obsessed with this for the wrongest reasons. I don't know. That's a joke. Um, but no, the, the coach can make all the difference because if, if they demotivate you, you don't, you don't want to go forward. You're just like, I, I don't need this in my life. Yes, we're in this it's this chicken and egg thing. Mm-hmm. And you know what? If I had all the answers, mm-hmm. I had already been on Oprah by now. And mm-hmm. last time I checked, Oprah hasn't called me. So I do not have all the answers. I, I have more questions. I do have some thoughts. How come sport... How come we're allowed to use reward and punishment to manipulate behavior? Because that's what we do. Mm-hmm. When you do what I want, I like you and I approve of you. Mm-hmm. When you don't do what I want, I dislike you and I disapprove of you. And on top of that, we're going to run some suicides. Hockey, we're going to bag skate. Uh, football, we're going to do up downs. I mean, it's this. It's just like I mentioned before, that team that lost in the gold medal game had to run suicides as punishment. And I keep asking because I get to see I get to see the cost Mm -hmm. because I get to see the athletes. Mm -hmm. I get to hear the athletes and the things that they tell me, they don't tell anyone else. But I can tell you this culture of reward and punishment where we manipulate behavior creates fear. Ah. There are a lot of fearful athletes out there. They are seeking reward and mm-hmm. doing everything they can to avoid punishment. The other thing I find so interesting, when we punish in sport, mm-hmm. this is my opinion, we're actually punishing athletes for things that, out of, that are out of their control. Oh, really? Winning and losing. Mm-hmm. Winning and losing. If you could control it, you'd win all the time. Yeah. Making mistakes. If you can tr- could control it, you would never make mistakes. What do athletes get punished for? Mistakes, messing up, losing, basically making the coach look bad. And I, 
I see fear creeping in and then everything gets put on social media. So the fear wow. is even greater because it's like, now everyone's going to know about this. <laughs> Everyone is going to see this. And athletes are incredibly insecure and fearful. I, you know, I, I, it occurs to me that I probably should be glad that my PE, you know, social media was around when my PE or any sort of sports that I did, I did, I did basketball for a while, racquetball, and then here's something else I did. But uh, I, I guess you should be glad that it's not put on the internet where people control it and, you know, be ugly and nasty. And I, I mean, it's already bad enough. I have a YouTube channel for the last 12 years that, that gets a, plenty of trolling and hate and, you know, calling me fat. And, uh, you know, every, I mean, I've been, I've been told to go jump off a cliff because our, sometimes their product review isn't quite, I don't know, whatever they thought it should be. And so my life, revolves around the the quality of a three minute video. So I know what that trolling is like. It's pretty ugly. I can't imagine going through it as a as a as a uh athlete. Especially a young one that doesn't have a good sort of uh callus to, to that sort of criticism. Well if you think about how we respond when we're in an environment where we are nervous, fearful, insecure. Mm-hmm. Think about how that affects our performance, mm-hmm. right? It blocks creativity. It blocks risk-taking. It blocks trying new things. It blocks raising your hand to ask questions. Uh, I have an athlete that uh, – this is a 12-year-old that I'm working with, and he was talk. – I've been trying to get him to work on some of these things, and he just texted me the other day. He said, our soccer game finished 0-0, so it went to a shootout. And coach asked for volunteers. And he said, and I raised my hand. Do you know how many kids don't raise their hand in that (laughs) situation? Mm -hmm. Because they're like, oh, hell no. You think I'm going to go out there with everyone watching, might make it, might miss it, and then have everyone judge me for it, throw me under the bus, or punish me? There's no way. Lots of kids are not signing up for that anymore. Yeah. I, it's, 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 it's disheartening. And plus, it teaches you so much about character because you have to learn to deal with that stuff. You have to learn to, to uh, the downfalls and everything. And if you don't prepare for it, then you're really stuck later in life when, you know, you come across trials and tribulations and you're going to fail, like you say. I mean, I, I remember there was a lot of games. I think I think you can even say games with like Michael Jordan or spectacular athletes where they may have had you know most of the baskets and scores in the game, but still the, they lost because either they met a better team or it was just that their better night or maybe they no matter what they did they couldn't carry their whole team. And so, yeah, there's times where you're going to lose, but sports is so important. You know, I mean, when they taught us sports when I was a kid. It was it was about teaching sportsmanship and you know, being a good loser, being a good winner, and and camaraderie and, and teamwork and, and stuff like that. I don't, does, do they still teach that sort of thing in, in school sports nowadays? Well, here's my here's where this is what I think is a valuable conversation. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they teach it in sport nowadays. Mm-hmm. I just watch. Mm -hmm. what youth sport is doing. And I think, I think one of the problems was you talked about it already. When we grew a culture of kids that got participation medals, yeah, right? (laughs) Everyone gets a medal. Seriously. Who thought that was a good idea? Mm -hmm. Because what we said is we're, when everyone gets a participation medal, we are going to save you from your crappy feelings of losing. So we're going to save you from the feelings. And when we save athletes from feelings, we are blocking emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. Feels over reels. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, so we're actually doing them a disservice. And now, so now it's like, to me, we are on these two ends of the pendulum. It's the participation medals, or it's like run till you puke. One, you know, one of those. And and what I think is that we need something in the middle. The storm is coming 
And instead of punishing you, instead of all these things that are going on, can we provide a mental toughness toolkit to handle the, sh- the poop, the crappy, the storms, the losing, the coaches yelling, the making mistakes? Because participation medals did not solve the problem. Mm-hmm. And now we think, well, then I'll just be hard on them. There, that'll teach them. Mm-hmm. I think we can be hard on them, perhaps, but not unless we equip them yeah. with figuring out how to manage that. Yeah. And, you know, the mental game is is so important. Like, I recently started going to the gym for the first time in 54, 53 years it would have been wow. uh, at the time, uh, daily. And I've been going daily since August uh, first or second. So I think I'm at seven or eight months now. Wow. Uh, and I've never done that in my life. I, I've owned gym memberships for three years and gone five times. Uh, mm-hmm. I've owned, uh, I've, you know, I've gone for maybe a week straight or something. Uh, and, uh, this is the very first time that I've, I've gone every single day. Uh, there might be a few days where I take off for a rest day. Yep. Uh, but other than that, it's pretty much every day I check in on social media for accountability and, and everybody sees, Oh, Chris was at the gym again. And, uh, the accountability really helps too. Um, but, uh, I go and it's become such a habit of mine that even if I don't feel like going to the gym, like if I, if I'm having a day, like yesterday was kind of a day where I'm like, uh, really beat up and I'm like, I really don't feel like going. And, I'll still like get in the car and drive myself to the gym and I'll just start slowly. I'm like, okay, we don't feel like working out. Why don't you just try doing some stuff? <laughs> and you know, then I'll start doing it. And then, then the routine kicks in and the mental part kicks in and pretty much when I assume my body's like, okay, we're doing this. Um, but that uh, part of what it is, is really the word discipline for me is the, is the key thing. Just showing up, just going, just just going to do it, having the discipline to do it. And it's really more of a mental game than a physical game. Because once I'm there, everything kind of kicks in and I go, okay, yeah, we're doing things, you know, do all the things. And, uh, but, you know, sometimes you, when you have that mental state where you're like, I don't know if I want to, uh, I'm tired. Or, you know, you, you get some of that, uh, what you call the, the S storms. Um, you're like, I don't, I don't really, you know, my back's kind of hurting. I don't know. Um, but you know, you, you push through it because you've got that mental clarity to do it with. Oh, bam. Look at you doing your high performance habits. Well, <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, but that one thing mm-hmm. is so critical. Mm-hmm. We're coming back to the F word feel. Mm-hmm. I've been doing this for 40 years. When I look at the high performers in any sport, they do not let their feelings drive their behavior. I use the analogy of ice cream and vegetables. Hmm. If you're for me, I hate vegetables, Brussels sprouts. If I even smell them, it makes me gag. So if you said, okay, Shawnee, here's two buffets. Here's the vegetable buffet. Here's the ice cream buffet. Which one am I going to choose? I'm going to freaking choose the ice cream buffet all dang day because it feels better. It tastes better. So when we don't feel like going to the gym, of course not, because that's vegetables. Mm -hmm. You talked about the word discipline. Mm -hmm. When I look at the hundreds of athletes that I've worked with and you ask me, what's one separator? Sean, you're only allowed to say one. Don't give me three. And don't say, ooh, it's mental toughness, because that's too vague. Give me one thing. The one thing that I believe is the separator is self-discipline. Mm. It's the people that are willing to eat their vegetables, even though they don't want to, on a consistent basis. That yeah. is the separator. Because guess what? News alert, it's easy to pass lazy people. Mm-hmm. And there is so much ice cream out there. <laughs> Look at what phones. Look at what phones are doing to us. Social media, we will scroll all day long rather than mm-hmm. go to the gym or do our workout. Well, you know that thumb kind of, that kind of is a, when you're doing the <laughs> swiping thing. Is that, is that, that's like at least uh, five. But there's no freaking Olympics. 
There's no, there's no, there's no Olympics for scrolling yet. I don't know. Yet. I, I, I know some teenage girls that are probably Olympics at that. Uh, yes. I've seen I some of them you. type. They're like, you're like, holy crap. Right I can't even think that fast. Yeah. But uh, that's that's their that's the new age of of their you know growing up social media. <laughs> I'm kind of glad I grew up without social media and without phones and computers. But I don't know, maybe I'm dumber because of it. Um, but yeah, the the mental game is really everything. Um, you know, even like even like sometimes I'll, I'll I'll play games. You know, your head will play games with you, and I'll be like, you know, I have a treadmill here at the house. I don't need to go to the gym and do the treadmill thing. Oh, uh, you can skip the treadmill thing today because I got it at the house. Well, the problem is, is here at the house, there's five trillion distractions. You know, there's uh, donuts and there's uh, the computer and, like you say, the phone. And, you know, my dogs want to go play. And, and I've just learned that, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, using that treadmill every now and then is pretty good. But I won't, I won't focus on it. The nice thing is, is if I drive, you know, 15 minutes to my gym, I'm stuck there because it took me 15 minutes to get there and come back. So I might as well just get on the stupid treadmill and do the treadmill because there's nothing else to do there other than lift weights. And so, uh, you know, it's, it's all part of that mental game. And, you know, now I've got it down to a habit where I almost feel weird by not, if I take a day off and don't go to the gym. It's almost kind of like, I don't know, man. In fact, my muscles kind of start going, hey, man, we're kind of achy because you need to get to the gym, dude. We need to you need to keep these things going. Um, it's like a point of atrophy or something where if I don't go. But, uh, yeah, the mental is everything. Um, what sort of other uh, uh, stuff do you want to plug about how you coach, what you do, and, and how you do it, and how people can work with you? I got to go back to your other comment first. Because you, there's a really important nugget in there. This practice of, of self-discipline, this, uh, this thing that we're talking about, vegetables and ice cream. There's another thing in there that you said, high performers don't lie to themselves. Mm. We can tell ourselves all these little white lies. Oh, you know what? I'll do it later. Oh, you know what? That shoulder's kind of bugging me today. And you know, I think it needs a day off. Oh gosh, maybe it needs an, it might need, maybe it needs another day off. Maybe it, and we, we can get really good at lying to ourselves to help us avoid the vegetables. Mm -hmm. So what you're actually doing is you're not letting you, you stop lying to yourself because lying to yourself, you ended up having memberships where you would work out five times. Mm -hmm. So when we start telling the truth to ourselves, these are high performance habits. Yeah, it's the, the lying to yourself is the thing that gets it in your head where you're like, eh, you know, uh, I don't need to do that. And, you know, it's, it's the habit is having the habit now after seven to eight months. I have to go calculate. I think it's eight months now since August 1st. Um, the, uh, doing it every single day and going. And like I said, there's, there's some days where I just, I just don't feel well. And sometimes I'll go, I'm just like, get in the car, you know, and you take the, you take all the BCAAs and the protein and all the, you know, the creatine and all that crap I take. And that usually kind of helps when that kicks in. Um, and, th and there's been times where I've been at the gym and I'm just like, oh, man, I feel like crap. I just can't get motivated. And I'm just like, hey, go take a time out. Go sit in the, go sit in the locker room, breathe for a while, just kind of relax. You know, don't quit. Don't go home. And sometimes maybe, I don't know, sometimes digestion or sometimes, I don't know, I'm just not feeling it, the, the stuff kick in that I need. Um, and then sometimes I'll just go sit in there and uh, take a break. And then and then I'll, I'm like, okay, I'm starting to feel a little bit better now. I think we're, you know, the body's starting to kick into gear and the, the, the wheels are starting to move. And then I'll go out and finish what I'm doing. But, yeah, showing up, the mental game is just everything, like you say. Well, you're – you're doing and this another piece of this is the ability to tolerate discomfort mm -hmm. and what a lot of coaches are telling me is that that's that skill has becoming less and less in athletes maybe it's because of the participation model where we didn't have to practice <laughs> right pra yeah. we didn't have to practice discomfort 
Because as soon as it got uncomfortable, we went home. As soon as we got uncomfortable, somebody gave us a medal or a ribbon to make us feel better. But absolutely, high performers, they they have the ability to tolerate discomfort. The other thing that happens is our tolerance grows. Mm -hmm. We get better at tolerating discomfort. Mm -hmm. Where you're already eight months into it. Yeah, I'm really good at discomfort. In fact, I... Uh, about, I guess if you call it four or five days now, I switched my training program, uh, instead of doing five sets of, of 10, um, of 10 reps, uh, on everything that I was working on, uh, I switched to, uh, uh, four reps of 20 or 20 or until I could feel my muscles burning and on fire and screaming and I can't do any more, you know, fail basically. And if I get above 20, I usually up the weight. Um, and <laughs> I didn't think it would be that hard to so make that switch. Cause I'm like, I'm going to do five at 10. I mean, what's four and 20? Uh, it's, it's evidently a whole world of difference. And, uh, it, for about three days, it was, uh, it was basically like getting hit by a bus. It was very yeah. painful um, and recovery and everything else. But now I'm on the third or fourth day. I'm feeling really good about it, and and I feel fine now. Like I'm back to kind of how I used to feel when I when I was doing the old sets. But yeah, pushing above that level and for about three days there, it was like really hard to go to the gym the next day. You're like, or at least take a recovery day. This is really like I'm not sure I'm I'm recovered. <laughs> <laughs> but the well, that's game grit. Game. Yeah, that's grit. And discipline. Right? Yeah, it's this this grittiness to to work through it, to tolerate the discomfort, the the pain in your case, because it would be really easy to mm -hmm. not do it. It would be really easy to lie to yourself mm -hmm. and figure out, oh, you know, I should probably have another day off. Or this this concept of grit. Again, this is a mental toughness skill, oh, yeah. and it gets better when we work at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's crazy. So uh, what, what are the best ways people can get in touch with you, sign up with your services, get to know you better, and, uh, and of course, reach out to you? They can find my contact information. It'll probably be on your show notes, but mm -hmm. my website is shawneeharley.com. You mm -hmm. can find me on social media. You can book a free no pressure call if you just want to shoot the breeze and uh, talk about ice cream and vegetables. <laughs> uh, you can you can book a, a book a, a free call also on my website. There you go. There you go. Uh, so this has been pretty awesome. Anything more you want to uh, touch on as we go out, Shawnee? I think that with this new world that we're in, we're trying to raise strong, mentally strong, physically strong kids and athletes. Mm -hmm. We're trying to get them to the podium. I think the most important podium is the podium of life. Mm -hmm. And I think sport is a context to help us become our greatest self. I think we cannot get there unless we have a mental toughness toolkit full of emotional intelligence, self-awareness, grit, vegetables, and self-discipline. <laughs> there you go. Less burgers, more vegetables. I love yes. that. I love that metaphor, the podium of life. Mm -hmm. That's that's an awesome metaphor. Well, thank you very much for coming on the show, Shani. We really appreciate you coming and sharing with us your expertise and, and experience. Hey, and you know what? Great job for you. Eating your vegetables and having some high performance habits. Bam. Yeah, I'm getting there. Not bad. I mean, 53 years, finally got around to it. <laughs> but, you know, hey, better late than never, I guess. You bet. Is That's that what right. They say? But, yes. Well, thank you very much. Thanks to my audience for uh, tuning in. Be sure to refer the show to your family, friends, and relatives. Go to YouTube.com, Fortress Chris Foss. Go to Goodreads.com, Fortress Chris Foss. All of the Chris Foss channels on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram. All those crazy places those kids are on the interwebs flipping their phones. Anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in. Be good to each other. Stay safe. And we'll see you guys next time.